Right now, a widespread coral bleaching event is happening across the Great Barrier Reef, and scientists are warning that similar events could be happening all over the world. Bleaching means the coral is under stress from things like warming ocean temperatures and pollution. Those ecosystems not only provide food and economic security to millions of people, but as CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen shows us, saving these habitats could also save lives. Look, here he comes. Audrey Lindsay loves dogs. Put it right here. Okay, you do it. And playing doctor. Good job. Is it go beep 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 beep? When did you learn that she was battling cancer? She woke up on January the 3rd with a really bad bloody nose. About two, three days later, they did some more testing and found out that she had AML. Acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is an aggressive form of blood cancer. It's a lot. It has its hard days and it has its good days. Audrey immediately started treatment at Cook Children's Hospital in Fort Worth, Texas. This is the medication cytarabine, which is sort of one of the backbones of the um, chemotherapy that she receives. She couldn't be cured without this medicine. And neither could most of the estimated 500,000 Americans living with leukemia. Cytarabine prevents cancer cells from replicating. This complex chemical compound comes from a very simple organism, the sea sponge. Sponges are believed to be the first known animals on Earth. They're also an essential part of coral reef ecosystems, which are in desperate need of life-saving themselves. From Hawaii's Big Island, Dr. Greg Asner is on a mission to conserve and restore the world's coral reefs that are dying as climate change warms the ocean. Understanding where and how quickly that's happening can only be done from the sky. Through satellite technology and this imaging spectrometer, researchers scan the depths, creating these technicolor pictures of the ocean floor. Every image is stitched together to make the Allen Coral Atlas, showing conservationists areas that are resilient and the reefs that need life support. So you're kind of like a reef doctor. Yeah, you're getting the diagnosis. It's kind of like an MRI of the reef from up here. They've survived heat events. They've survived pollution. They've survived against all odds. And that gives me a lot of hope because we're learning from those areas. The question became, how could they use these resilient strains of coral to repopulate dying reefs? By keeping that ecosystem healthy, it ensures other organisms like the sea sponge thrive. The corals are gonna come into this massive nursery and they're gonna be the parents of millions and millions of offspring that are gonna go back into the ocean. Asner's team has seen about a 70% survival rate in Hawaii Early evidence these kinds of reef rescues could work elsewhere, but not everywhere. Some regions are so far gone, to be blunt, the hottest waters are in that northern Caribbean area near Florida. Florida's waters hit triple digits in 2023, a deadly heat wave for reefs. Now, just 2% of its coral remains. Some people may think that you're fighting a losing battle. What do you say to that? Reefs are in trouble. Fossil fuel emissions have got to be capped. Uh, restoration programs have got to be ramped up. Coastlines have got to be cleaned up. There's layers and layers of reasons to keep these reefs intact. Ready? Here go. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Yeah. Audrey is one big reason. If we didn't have those habitats, we wouldn't know all of the advances that we could be taking advantage of and putting them to use in such a magical way to heal our children. Just days before our interview, they learned Audrey's medicine is working. She is in remission. Mm -hmm. She is on the mend and we are so happy to hear it. There were nearly 2,000 new cases of leukemia in Illinois in 2020. The last year, numbers were available from the CDC. And to give you an idea of the national demand for those medications that depend on marine habitats, it's jumped nearly 1,400% in the past decade, according to Medicare and Medicaid data, totaling more than 3 million prescriptions in 2021.